What if we told you that you are drastically overcomplicating the way you think about League, and that a lot of decisions can be simply boiled down to needing to answer just one easy question? Today, we're going to be teaching you a rule that, if mastered, will single-handedly take you to Diamond. Let's jump right in and start exploring what I like to call the Mirror Rule. This rule is equally effective and important for every lane in the game, so we'll be showing examples from all five roles. And by the way, we created a brand new custom course specifically for this guide at skillcap.com. It's there you can unlock eight additional site exclusive guides where I walk you through exactly how to implement this one rule to climb the ranks on every role. Find out more along with a discount code at the end of this guide. Now, back to the video. The mirror rule kicks in when there is a play happening on the map involving non-standard lanes. All this means is that someone is where they aren't prescribed to be. Whether it's a jungler showing on map ganking a lane, a mid laner roaming, a support and ADC rotating mid lane to help with Herald, whatever. When this happens, you just need to ask one question. For this play, will I positively change the outcome if I go to it directly? If yes, go to it. If no, find counterplay and mirror your opponent's pressure on the other side of the map. At its core, it sounds quite simple, but it has a plethora of use cases and different scenarios that we need to explore to fully master it. So let's get to it. This matchup for Jax is less than ideal. Akali for the most part wins until much later into the game, and the lane phase is a miserable experience if the Akali is skilled. However, Jax is fending it off pretty well just waiting for the wave to come in and conserving his health. When Akali shows leaving towards bot side and headed towards what looks like a dragon fight, this should trigger us to put the mirror role into play. Looking at this situation, I have very little doubt that Jax's presence would not change the outcome at all. Four members of the enemy team are present, and only two of ours are. The dragon is also already taken, giving us very little incentive to go. This should lead us to conclude that looking for counterplay is the best choice. Jax is in a very good position now to fast push this wave and actually get priority for once over Akali, something that would normally never really happen. This could let him deny her farm at tower for leaving, potentially get a roam towards top off, or even get a base timer to go by. The point is, is that he has a lot of options to get ahead if he were to push now. However, you will firsthand see the problem that plagues low elo so rampantly. He tries to follow Akali to a play that he cannot influence and ends up missing his opportunity to get any sort of punish off, stifling his chance to get a lead and letting Akali come back to a stacked wave for her to farm. Not once did Akali lose pressure in this lane, even though she should have, and Jax now is a completely useless mid laner getting pushed in on repeat. We can see the same problem hurt even the other team's top laner, who fell victim to the same issue at the exact same time. He starts moving towards the fight at Dragon, but has horribly misjudged how long it will actually take for it to conclude. Because of this, he quite literally throws away an entire wave of minions for free, getting absolutely no advantage in return. Had he in this moment used the mirror rule, he would know to seek counterplay instead. He would have had better options and avoided giving Cho'Gath a freeze to farm safely. If we look at bottom at the same time, you'll see the same thing. Jinx slow pushes out the bot wave and stacks too, but because Jin rotates to Dragon, even though he would never make a difference, he loses three full waves to his tower, which this early on in the game is way too much to recover from. The value of those waves is equal to multiple kills when you factor in the gold and experience lost, and will ultimately result in a snowball that loses you the game. Three lanes all making the same mistake at the same time in one game is a dead giveaway that this is an insanely common issue. And fixing it will fix more than just one mistake per game because this happens multiple times every game, even in high elo. For reference, this game is platinum, and it's insanely easy to find examples of this to the point where I would bet money that any game would have it. Let's look at how challenger players don't make the same mistake and how much they actually get by avoiding it. Our challenger expert 6AX is piloting Tristana in this game and finds his team getting picked mid lane. Let's listen into his thoughts here. So I'm just going to split push a bit here because I see a lot of people mid of making a play that I'm not going to be on time for. So what is my best response? Is it to go there and just be late and do nothing? Or is it to push? And I think uh, uh, pushing is way, 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 way more beneficial. 
Even when his opponents drop Rift Herald mid, he knows that he will be unable to stop them from taking the mid tower, or from killing his teammates. Grouping is completely useless to him, so he's much better off staying in the side lane, picking up solo gold on the tier 2 tower, as well as getting into the enemy jungle to steal the blue away. All of this happens while he's getting wave after wave in the process. At the end of this play, he has roughly a thousand more gold than when he started, and the time that's passed is less than a minute. By using the mirror rule, you can make plays like this that equate to over 3 kills worth of gold in under 60 seconds. If he had rotated to stop the play, he would have missed this chance to get massively ahead, and of course, this lead further snowballs. We aren't saying to never join fights, but you can tell that challenger players are very intentional when they do decide to. Switch is showing mid, so I can go mid here. As long as my team plays this slow, I can just attend it and be like uh, very impactful as I killed the enemy AD already. All right, I, I tried for the Twitch here. We can see another one of our challenger experts, Sam, deciding to not leave his lane to great effect. Seeing Malphite bottom here at the dragon gives us the go sign to force counterplay on the other side. We don't have teleport to join quickly, and by walking, we would never get there on time. Because of this, he full sends into pushing top lane, and ends up getting a ton of waves and the top tier 2 tower. Similarly to the Trist example, he gets a lot of gold loaded into his character within a very short span of time, gaining 1600 gold in just over a minute. If you think about how many kills he would need to get that same amount of gold, it's over 5. And when you put it like that, the value becomes readily apparent. Except this takes literally no execution and has essentially zero risk. Low elo opponents are incredibly bad at recognizing what counterplay you will have to their plans, and will often make plays that allow you to completely neutralize whatever they do just by executing on the other side of the map. Even though he has teleport available here, Sam knows that he can't change Lulu's death, and it's better to use the fact that his enemies are showing top to just push mid with Harold. They get two towers and a crash onto the inhibitor tower as well. Because of how strong he got from using the mirror rule earlier, every fight is incredibly easy, even though the game's score looks very even. Looking for these kinds of plays directly contradicts what humans naturally want to do. We see a problem and want to solve it, head on. But a lot of times, the indirect solution is actually the better one. This is a challenger earpiece I was doing with a platinum subscriber, and you can see him pathing towards topside due to all of his camps being down, and Harold being the only objective. This is normally a perfectly valid reason, but listen to what I tell him during this section here. Straight bot Ooh. here, maybe. Oh, shit. I don't think you ever get to top in time to do Harold. Can you maybe play for mid? I don't think you can contest rip, that's the thing is okay. you get on a mid push and you're losing top push here. So we want to look where we can actually do something. And like we can just dive bottom here. Yep. See? Zero way you would have gotten that by going top. So yeah. we're just immediately going for another thing. Check the ground. Check the ground. Do the ground. Do the ground. You never change mid outcome. It all tower always goes down there. Just take his camps. Take all of them. Kill bot maybe? She's walking up. She go from behind the tower and just kick her. Yep. Yeah, she's just fucking dead. An incredible strength of making cross-map plays is something that not a lot of players will consider. It punishes those that do not follow the mirror rule themselves. This resulting fight only happens because the enemy team tries to come salvage a play on the side of the map that they've already lost on. When people react to things directly, they are automatically on the back foot. They're behind pace to a play, they likely have worse vision due to having to approach, and lose the ability to make plays on the opposite side themselves. And this is something that challenger players can and will exploit consistently. Our challenger expert Espen recognizes immediately when Ari is following a play that she just shouldn't. When he starts being trailed and Ari collapses for the dragon fight, he just turns and one shots her, easily being able to land a full combo due to having superior vision in the area that he was first to. Ari should have realized her disadvantage when Kiana left lane and applied the mirror roll. Knowing that she can't follow directly, she could shove midwave and force Kiana to miss farm, and give her plates if she didn't come back to lane immediately. Even if Kiana did return, the wave at her tower would mean that Ari would actually get a turn to make a proactive play, and force Kiana to be the one behind her in pace. This concept is essentially just tempo. 
One person will have the ability to threaten a play first, and the other feels compelled to respond to it. The person behind in tempo is at a disadvantage here, but the mirror rule can let you flip it on its head. If we look at a low elo example, we can see how this concept works. Blue team is trying desperately here to contest the dragon area, even though they do not have the strength or the vision set up to do so. And they end up wasting 30 seconds or so just lingering here. If we apply the mirror rule, anyone on the blue team could have gone topside to start pressuring the tower. With dragon being uncontestable, we could have picked up two waves top and gotten the top tower as a response. Not only is there an objective bounty, so the gold gain would be even greater, it would force tempo back into our favor. It may not be clear why, but let's look at what actually happened and then explain. Tristana had the right idea after the dragon was killed, but unfortunately, this happens 30 seconds too late. By the time she makes it to top lane, the enemy team is already there to respond and she loses her life almost instantly. But let's imagine a scenario where instead of Tristana doing this play late, Rumble is the one that goes top. Not only would he have had 30 seconds of time extra to do this, giving him plenty of time to get vision and get the tower without dying, if three people rotated top, it would give us a chance to go on the offensive. We could take this time to send four people mid and take the mid tower as well, getting two objective bounties and two towers in one go while they're distracted top lane. By creating one play where we have initiative over our opponents and forcing them to react to us, it can snowball into multiple plays that can completely turn losing game states around. You can spread their resources thin by dragging them across the map and attack from other angles to create new plays that would otherwise not exist. The Ari and the Kiana example kept trying to follow Kiana on her roams, instead of looking for counterplay, and it ended poorly every time. But when our challenger sees Ari taking the initiative and starts to roam, look at what he does. Looks like Ari's running up, so I'll shove out the wave. I mean, there's no reason for us to fight. I'll just run bot lane now. If Ari runs up, I'll make a cross map happen. I can't walk in here, there's a very high likelihood I'll die, but instead I'll just go dive bot lane. Jump over the wall. I think it's very clear to see a pattern of how low elo opponents respond and how our high elo experts are all choosing very different options almost every time. It's almost automatic, especially in Challenger, to see someone show on the map and then an immediate counterplay is taken. The enemy Viego shows top lane, so Nocturne automatically looks to invade the enemy Raptors. This may seem small, but these kinds of plays are very significant and a large portion of why Challenger players are Challenger. You can not always stop your opponents from making positive plays, but you can find the correct answer to combat them after the fact. However, speaking of stopping your opponents from making positive plays, the next level of the mirror rule involves actively looking to prevent your opponent's counterplay to you and your team's actions. In this clip, Kiana is looking to roam bottom to clean up an overextended duo lane. She successfully kills the enemy Jinx, and overall, this roam is incredibly good. However, it's not actually, all because Samira did not apply the mirror rule. The rule doesn't only apply to the enemy's actions. When we know that our team will be in non-standard lanes, we can adjust to remove our enemy's counterplay. Liss did the correct thing here by shoving mid instead of trying to follow Kiana, and is rewarded with two waves and three and a half plates. Around a thousand gold was gotten here, and she essentially got the exact same golden XP that Kiana got from getting a shutdown bot lane, except she also got a lot of tower damage. Let me remind you that this is in a losing position. Kiana took the initiative to go bottom, so you would expect her to get more from this, but she doesn't. However, imagine if Samira, right as Kiana is committing to bot lane, had recognized this and gone mid. She could have stopped Liss from equalizing this gold and turned Kiana's roam into an extremely positive play, neutralizing Liss's counterplay. We can go one step further by preparing ahead of time to deal with potential counterplay as well. Stopping your opponents from using the mirror should be a definite goal from ahead as it helps you to close games cleanly. Take for example this support game where Karma has a clean 3 for 0 teamfight. At first glance, helping your team with Dragon afterwards seems like a decent play. But when you realize that none of the enemy team has ults, 3 of them are dead, and Baron is up on the map, it makes sense that if our enemies apply the mirror rule here, they would look for vision topside. They just can't contest the dragon, so they will obviously go for something on the other side. This is exactly what happens, and because Karma helps on dragon instead of going to topside to set up vision, they're unaware of Vayne just sitting in this bush setting a trap for someone who walks by, or anyone who dares to face check. 
They give blue team the ability to get decent vision and also take away the crab. Had Karma just gone from mid and preempted the topside setup, Vayne would be instantly dead for sitting in the bush for as long as she did, as we would have time to call teammates over and pick her off easily. The mirror rule is universally one of the most important concepts in the game, and will definitely fix mistakes that cost you thousands of gold in just minutes. It keeps you from falling behind, it keeps you from throwing your lead, and it really just does it all at every point in the game. And while we did cover every lane and how the mirror rule can apply to you, there are tons of more examples that pop up all the time, which is why I went out of my way to make VOD reviews for every role showing you even more scenarios. And if you really want to learn how to carry in solo queue, then you need our brand new custom course made specifically for this guide at skillcap.com. In fact, let's give you a taste of what you'll find in that course. So not only will you get eight additional site exclusive guides packed with valuable tips just like that, it's also risk-free with our rank improvement guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Head to skillcap.com and get the rank you've always wanted. Discount link in the description below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.